Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my 21st Python 3 tutorial. In this tutorial, I am going to be talking more about classes, but this time I will be talking about inheritance, which is another really, really important and helpful feature of classes. Now, one of the great things about object-oriented programming is the ability to uh, reuse code, uh, such as methods or classes that you've already written. You can reuse them as many times as you want um, in the same program or across several programs. Um, just if, you, if you've already written a class, you can just use it as many times as you want. Now, inheritance is another way to achieve this uh, code reusability. And basically what inheritance is, it's kind of how it sounds. You know, in, um, in a family, you have parents and then children, which inherit uh, features from their parents. And inheritance in Python works the same way. You have a parent class, um, only one actually, and you have a parent class, and then you have uh, children classes, which inherit features from the parent class. And the relationship between the, the classes, it's sometimes called parent and child class, or the higher class, the class that is inherited from, is the super class, and the children classes are the subclasses. Um, and one of the great things about inheritance is that you can have as many subclasses as you want. You can have as many classes as you want um, inherit from the same class. And the reason you would do this is, let's say you have a couple different classes. Let's say a military class, a teacher class, and a student class that you want to create for a program. Now, these three classes uh, would have similar features such as name, sex, age, things like that. But they would also have different um, variables and methods. For instance, the military uh, class might have a rank variable. The teacher class might have a subject variable. And the student class might have a loans variable. Now, you couldn't create the same class for all three of these. That much is clear. But um, it would be a little bit redundant creating three separate classes just because there would be a, you know, a bunch of methods that you would have to write again and then variables that you would be... Um, the, that would essentially be the same across all three classes. And once you get more and more classes, and even more and more methods and variables, um, this can easily get redundant and, and very tedious, and you want to avoid that. So that's where inheritance comes into play. What you can then do with inheritance is you create a superclass, and let's say it's a, it's a person, it's a class just called person, and the uh, sub and this 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 parent class, the super class would have the variables and methods that are going to be in common with your subclasses. Then the subclasses inherit this person, this this uh, parent class, the super class, and they get all those variables and all those methods. And then they can just you know if they have extra variables or methods that they want, they can then uh, create them. The you can create those variables in the classes the which are specific to the variables. So why don't I go ahead and show you an example of inheritance and put it into action. Now I'm going to create a new class here. This is going, I'm actually going to put all, f all uh, four of my classes in the same file. Normally when you're writing programs you don't do this. You usually have uh, separate files for classes but just for ease of like writing this I'm going to do it this way. So I'm first going to create my parent class, which is going to be called person. And I'm going to put some parentheses here. Now, this is, these parentheses is actually where inheritance um, is how you inherit things. And the super class doesn't need to do anything unless they happen to be a subclass of something else. Because you can, in fact, have multiple inheritances. Like, you have a, a first class, and then something inherits that class. And then something else inherits the class that was inheriting the first one. And you can just have a whole, a whole bunch of inheritance is going on and it can get pretty crazy but we're not going to do that I'm just going to stick with this one for right now so let me create my constructor method I'm going to have the all important self variable and then name age I'm just going to keep it simple just do those right now so self dot name equals name self dot age equals wow age there we go um, I will also have uh, the string to print it out. Um, let me just do. Oops. All right. So 
I will print sorry return um, my name is I am years old alright and then when I have the other classes um, I can show you some different things that you can do uh, or, or how to add on to this in the other classes. Let me format this one real quick. I'll format it with self.name and self.age. Alright. So there's my person class. Um, <clears throat> let me save it real quick as person.py. Alright. Um, now I can run this, but if you watch my other tutorials you'll kind of know what happens? Um, it'll create, you know, person there, and then when I print the person, it'll return that. So let me just go ahead and create the other classes, and then we can look at them all together. Um, I'm now going to create a military class, and now these you need these parentheses because inside of these parentheses goes the class that you wish um, to inherit from. In this case, person. So I'll do that and then um, create the initialization method. So, and you still need to pass through the name and age. And I'm also going to have a rank. So what I'm going to do is this is how you can call the um, person constructor method. And if you call it from in the, the military class, uh, it will construct these variables for you so you don't have to redo it so what you do is person dot init initialization and you pass through self name and age and now if you watch my last tutorial I talked about uh, class methods a little bit and this is how uh, you call a class method because you're just uh, initializing uh, these these variables essentially and then you can do self dot rank not rank rank equals rank um, now let me go ahead and create uh, this uh, oops the, the string function and what I'm doing here is I'm actually overriding it's, it's a, a term called overriding this method and once in a in an if in a subclass, um, if you create a method with the same name as a class in, or a method in the uh, parent class, then that is called overriding the method. And basically, what you're doing is when you call the essentially when you call the um, when you call a method from a uh, military object, an object of the military class. It'll first um, go through the military class and check and see if there's any methods uh, that correspond to the name. And if there are, it'll call that. If not, it'll go to the person class. It'll go to the um, parent class and then check there to see if there are any methods by that name. And so if I did not have this here, then it would um, just call this one up here from the, the person class. And I will actually demonstrate that as soon as I have these written. So what I'm going to do is return. Now I'm gonna, again going to use uh, this string function up there as a class method. But I'm going to add to it uh, I am a and then the rank. It's going to go here. Format um, self.rank. All right. So now let me create the other two classes, and I can actually just pretty much copy and paste this this military one. Uh, make a few changes, obviously, for the other two. Um, oops, let me, for instance, changing the name. So I'll have a teacher and a student class, and this is going to have subject sub. This will have loans, and the loans is actually going to be a. Uh, integer or, uh, du or double 
Now, in this class, I will, in this teacher class, I teach, and then it'll have the subject. And in this person, in the student class, I'm actually going to get rid of this, um, the string function altogether, so you can see overriding um, in a little more detail. So let me go ahead and save it, and then run module. All right, so I'm first just going to create a person, and they're uh, just of the person class. So I'm going to do Mike, and then he's going to be 20. All right. So then if I print person, see my name is Mike. I'm 20 years old, which you know goes right along with the uh, the print function that I had up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a military. Um, Person, so I'll just do M1 equals military uh, Dan 40. You can be a general. So if I print M1, oops. All right, I know. I did not do this. I don't know why, but it just didn't happen. Let me go ahead and run it again. I also noticed there's going to be a little error with the uh, teacher class, but that's no problem. All right, let me go ahead and do this, and now let me print it. There you go. So now you see this part right here is from the person class, and this is from the military class. This is the kind of add-on that you saw happened right here, this, this little add-on right here. Um, and so the same thing with the teacher class. If I do T1 equals teacher Mike, another Mike, 35 teaches math. And then if I print T1, you can see, yeah, well, there's the error, but it's the same thing. Now, however, if I go to um, a student, student Ted 20, and he is a hundred thousand dollars in loans, which is a lot, but sucks for him. All right, so <clears throat> print him. Now you can see, even though I did not override the string method in the student class, it still went back to the parent class, the person, and then uh, called that string method from the person class. Um, now, in a way to see that even better, to see which class it's being called from, um, I can go into here and I can put a little print statement that says which class it's being called from. So in this case, it'd be military. And I'll add a little dash. And then here, it will be the person class. So person dash. And then down here, it'll be the teacher class. So F5 to run. So I'm just going to go ahead and you can click up here and then hit enter and it'll bring it down here. And then I'm just going to create all these people again just really quick. Now let me print them all out. So I'm going to print person. You can see it's being called from the person class. I print M1. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting because the first part is being called from the military class. But then uh, when it goes, when it calls this um, the the string method from the person class goes back up here and then it'll print that out. So that's why it says military then person because it's originally calling it from the military class then going up to the person class to call it. Um, and actually I want to make one change with the teacher class. What I want to do first is fix that but um, I'm actually going to get rid of this call just so it's, this is a little better I guess. I'm going to do this. My name is And so this way, uh, it won't actually call from the person class. So if I do this, if I create a teacher and then print oops, T1, um, now you can see it doesn't uh, go back up to the um, person class to call it. And that's because, again, it's overridden and it doesn't call the person string class. Now if I go to the student, which did not override it, if you remember, and then I print S1, um, 
it just calls it from the person class. So that's um, all I have on overriding and inheritance uh, in this tutorial. There will, there will definitely be more because it's very important. There's a lot more to cover. Um, but this is just some of the uh, most more basic stuff right now. Um, it can get a little confusing, but uh, if it got too confusing, uh, just send me a message, post a comment, and I'll respond to it as quick as I can um, in order to help you in any way. Um, or just, you know, watch the tutorial again, see if you get it a second time through. Um, but so again, I showed you inheritance, which is simply um, creating a parent class or a sub a super class and then creating as many subclasses as you would like which inherit the super class by putting it in the parentheses right after the name of the class and then it inherits automatically um, the methods of the class and uh, the variables um, but one thing that you have to do like it would inherit a class variable if I created one but um, what you'd have to do to get these variables up here is or to construct the variables is to call the constructor method um, using the class name and then dot in notation and then the constructor method. And then I showed you inheritance um, pretty briefly um, in this string method and kind of a little bit how that works and I will be doing more of that in detail as we go on um, but that's all I'm doing for right now so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.